Okay, let's take a look at a related rate problem from calculus. A ladder 10 feet long is leaning against a wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at 0.5 feet per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall? So here I've drawn a little picture of the situation. Here is the ground. Here is the wall. The ladder is leaning against the wall and the ladder is 10 feet long. So I've labeled the distance the ladder is from the wall with x and the distance the ladder is up the wall with y. So with these related rate problems, if I find the, the ladder is going to slide away from the wall in this direction, so that is going to be what we call dx dt, the rate of change of this distance x with respect to time. Likewise, the ladder is going to be sliding down the wall at the same time, so dy dt will be the rate of change of this distance with respect to time. So we have a relationship between x, y, and 10 given by the Pythagorean theorem. So all I need to do is differentiate this equation right here with respect to t implicitly, and I'll get a relationship between these two rates, dx dt and dy dt. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll differentiate x squared with respect to t. I get 2x dx dt plus, now I'll differentiate y squared with respect to t, and I'll get 2y times dy dt, okay, equals, and then I'll differentiate 100 with respect to t, 100 is a constant, so I end up with 0. So here's my relationship between these two rates, dx dt and dy dt. Let's see, I think I'll simplify a little bit. I can divide both sides by 2. How about if we write it this way? Y times dy dt is equal to, what do we have here, negative x times dx dt. So I've divided out the twos and then I added negative x dx dt to both sides so I get this relationship. Now I could go a little farther and divide by y but let's not do that just yet. So I want to read the problem again and just see what we have. A ladder 10 feet long is leaning against a wall. The bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at 0.5 feet per second. Okay, that's going to give me dx dt. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? That means I want dy dt when the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall. Well, 6 feet from the wall, that's going to be the distance the ladder is from the wall, which is x. So I have that dx dt is a constant 0.5 feet per second. And I'm interested in what dy dt is when x is equal to 6 feet. So I have x is equal to 6. I have dx dt is 0.5. So I have x, I have dx dt. I'm looking for dy dt. I need to find y. So I can use my Pythagorean theorem again. y is going to be equal to the square root of 100 minus 6 squared. Square root of 100 minus 36, which is going to be the square root of 64, which should give me 8. So when x is equal to 6 feet, y is going to be equal to 8 feet. So I'll substitute in x equals 6. I'll substitute in y equal 8, and I'll substitute in dx dt equal 0.5, and we'll have this. 8 dy dt is equal to negative x, which is 6, times dx dt, which is 0.5. So let me take it up over here, and I'm going to write this. 8 times dy dt is equal to negative 6 times 0.5, which is going to be negative 3. Let's see if that's still in the picture. Yep. Now I'll divide both sides by 8. dy dt is equal to negative 3 eighths, and I'll put in my units here, feet per second. So if I have this ladder, this 10-foot ladder, leaning up against this wall, and the ladder is sliding away from the wall down here on the ground at a half a foot per second, then the rate at which it's coming down the wall when x is equal to 6 feet is negative 3 eighths feet per second. So that negative sign is good because it tells us that that distance is getting smaller, so negative 3 eighths feet per second.
Now, before we leave this problem, I just want to go over this implicit differentiation for you one more time, just to make sure you've got it. Let's suppose that we have y is equal to u to the fifth power, where u itself is a function of x. And now if I differentiate y with respect to x, I get this with the chain rule. dy dx is going to be, okay, the exponent comes out in front, 5, same base, power 1 less, and then I have to differentiate the base, du dx. So that's the chain rule, and we always have to use the chain rule when we're differentiating like this. Sometimes you think, well, I'm not using the chain rule, but you really are. Let's suppose that y was equal to x to the fifth power, and I differentiate this with respect to x. Well, dy dx is going to be equal to, okay, take the exponent 5, same base, power 1 less, 4, and then I differentiate the base, which is dx dx. But since dx dx is 1, this just comes out to be 5x to the fourth power. So the chain rule is always there when I differentiate. It's just that um, when I'm just differentiating y with respect to x and my variable is x over here, I may just go right to this step and not even see the, x, the dx dx. But when I differentiate x squared plus y squared equal 100 with respect to t, I have to use that chain rule because dx dt and dy dt, those are those rates that I'm looking for. If I wasn't using the chain rule, I'd never see these derivatives. So the chain rule is what gives us these related rates. So in any case, there's a look at a related rate problem from calculus.